Um, so for you, like, why do you think people are afraid to get on sales calls in the first place? I feel like there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, but one of the main things I feel like is just people don't want to seem salesy and they don't want to come off like uh, grimy and sleazy because that's how they look at sales in the first place. Um, I didn't give a shit about getting on a bunch of sales calls, regardless if I did sell the person or if I didn't, um, because I knew that if I did sell them, they'd be coming into my program and I was going to change their life. I feel like it all has to do with how you're looking at your actual call in the first place. Um, and I feel like a lot of people just overlook that part. They just see the word sales call and it instantly makes them feel bad about themselves. They don't like the word sales. They don't like being sold. So it translates into their business and they're not able to grow. Dude, I, I think the same thing. I think that when people think sales call um, or when they think like, you know, enrollment call or whatever fancy word slash language you want to use around the call, um, yeah. when people think about getting on a sales call, instantly they feel, they think about all the times that they got sold or like yeah. all of the negative interactions that they've had with salespeople where they just like wanted to get off the phone immediately. And I think that a lot of online coaches, like a big reason that they have a fear of getting on sales calls is they, they don't want to look like a telemarketer. Um, and they don't want to be seen as that either. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's like something that you need to get over because if that's how you're looking at sales, you're never going to be able to sell your product and you're not going to be able to sell yourself, which is the most important thing. All right. If you can't talk good about yourself or good about your program, so people understand why you're doing what you're doing, you're never going to be able to make it in this game. You got to get over that fucking stigma, that fear, et cetera. Um, and it comes from practice. It comes from sucking up whatever bullshit excuse you have in your head and just doing it, all right? Figuring it out. Yeah, I, dude, I honestly think another reason that people are seriously afraid of getting on sales calls is there, let me know if you can relate to this online trainer. There's a lot of online trainers that are afraid of the word no. Dude. They're afraid of the word no. Like they're afraid of the word no. And especially when it comes to people that are in their circle. Like let's say your friend from high school applies or somebody that you, you're a coworker at your work is interested in your program. Like, and I think that because online trainers are so afraid of the word no, they're afraid that somebody might get on the phone with them and actually not want to be enrolled in their program. Like they, they don't want that no to happen and they don't want to be viewed negatively because somebody said no to them on the phone. And they also just don't want to deal with that fear of rejection. Like they don't want to feel like somebody close to them, like said no to their program. That makes them feel worse. And so a lot of trainers won't even try to book phone calls or get on sales calls because they're like, oh, I just don't want somebody to say no to me. So damn true. It's honestly insane how many people I've talked to in the 10K Coaching Academy and really how many coaches we've helped in the past before PT Dom was even this big um where that was the main thing we're like breaking down why they didn't want to get on calls and everything just came straight back to the part of they were scared to be rejected and i like to relate sales to dating a lot guys um in the academy in our coaching program i use this a lot when i'm breaking it down for our clients and an example i give is well if you were to ask a girl out all right or if you were to ask a guy out um and they said no are you just going to give up on dating altogether and be alone for the rest of your life are you really just going to accept that and be like, no, you know what? I'm just going to be a crazy old cat lady and sit in my house and do nothing. Or like um, dungeon gamer who never leaves the basement, never speaks to women ever again. Hell no. Okay. You just got to try again. All right. Because every no is one step closer to a yes. And you got to realize that you got to embrace that mindset. So I think another big reason that trainers struggle in general with being able to get on the phone with prospects is because a lot of online coaches, like online coaching has been around for a long time. And I don't know about you, bro, but like the first ever online coach that I worked with, like he sold me his, he sent me his prices over DM. Yeah. I got a uh, PDF or a word document with six prices on it and a fucking logo. And that was it. So why do you think online trainers, like, I think that the, another big reason that trainers feel like a fear of getting on sales calls or that they don't feel like they need to is because they see other online trainers sending prices online. So they're like, oh, I don't have to, I shouldn't have to get on the phone. Like, why would I get on the phone? I feel like, because again, coaches are looking at themselves as just coaches. Okay. But you guys need to realize that it's 2020. If you're an online fitness coach right now, you're not just a fucking fitness coach. You're also a fitness influencer. You're probably going to be an authority in your space producing content to help people on top of that as well. You need to be good at sales and you need to know how to sell yourself because there's thousands upon thousands of other coaches out there. So why would they go with you? All right. I feel like back in the day, yeah, you could get away with just setting a PDF because you're probably the only one in your space or back in the day, 
big coaches were the big coaches. They were the big dogs that ran the fucking industry because not a lot of other people are out there, whether they were just starting online or there was an in-person gym coach, you knew them because there was mm-hmm. not a lot of other people, right? They were wide known. So when someone came out to them, they just be like, yeah, here's my prices over PDF. But you got to realize the game has changed. Mm. All right. We don't run with dial up internet anymore. Like <laughs> you got to shift your fucking focus. You got to shift how you do things. Sending a PDF to someone with your prices is not going to get you anywhere. It's going to scare people because it's going to show that you don't care because you're not asking about their goals. You're not deep diving into everything. Um, and it just shows that you're not taking time. Dude. And I, that I love that. And I also think that let's talk about getting stuck in an old way of life. Because I think that this is why a lot of personal trainers are struggling to go online in the first place. Because if you think about personal training, like 10, 15 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago, if I wanted to hire a personal trainer, I literally had to go into the gym and then I had to go through a session and then I had to be matched up with my trainer. And then I would hire, like, that's how I would find a trainer. But now I can literally go on my social media feed. Like if I'm like a fitness client and I can scroll and I'll find five or six online trainers. Yep. So I, I want to interrupt you for a second there too, yeah. because I think it's funny. So all you trainers out there, if you do, or if you are listening to this right now and you're still kind of stuck in those old ways, you don't really like getting on calls, but you used to be the trainer who was the big dog, had all these clients. We've actually dealt with a few of them recently. Um, who don't really believe in online training. Listen, you just got to shift your focus. Cause the, the thing that makes me laugh is, you know, how you just explained how you used to hire an online train or hire a trainer. You go yeah. into a gym, You do a session that's an hour to an hour and a half long. Then they sit you down at a table and they sell you on a package. They're literally doing an in-person sales call right in front of your face the entire time. That's what the call is about. That's it. That's literally what they're doing. And I don't, they don't wrap their heads, their heads around doing this over the phone. They're like, well, it's sleazy. It's grimy. It's salesy. It's not good. That's what you're doing anyways. But you used to do it every single day. When people would come into the gym, you'd sit down, you'd assess their goals, you'd run them through an hour and a half session in person, and then you'd sell them on a package. Dude, and I actually, it's funny. This is why it's funny because number one, if you're currently an in-person trainer right now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hack. We have clients in our program that are doing in-person and online training, and they'll sell in-person training over the phone, by the way. So you no longer have to do those in-person one-on-one hour long assessments. You can do that assessment on the phone and you can get clear on their goals, their visions, et cetera. And you can sell in-person packages on the phone. So that's a complete and total side note. But the biggest thing that we need to kind of get clear on with this is that most online trade, like the old way of sending prices over DMs and email was cool because back in 2004, when Lane Norton was like one of the only online coaches, like that's what he did. And he like pioneered online coaching, but that, model is outdated. And so if you are an online coach that wants to enroll clients into your program, then you need to get on the phone. But for me, I don't think that you should be getting on the phone with the intention of like, quote unquote, making a sale. I think for me, the intention is stop viewing it as a sales call and start viewing it as a consultation. Like this call is literally just a consultation to see if I can help you. Yeah, I'm going to do my very best on this call to get clear on your goals, to get clear on what you're struggling with. And if I think I can help, I'm going to offer you my program. Like that frame of reference versus like, I'm going to sell everyone I get on the phone with. Like this isn't Wolf of Wall Street. We're not saying like you need to be Wolf of Wall Street and fucking pick up the phone and dial. Like (laughs) Cole's like, yes, you are. (laughs) But like, I'm saying that like, get on the fucking phone and try to help more people. Because if, if somebody reaches out to you and they're like, you know, Cole, I'm interested in your services and Cole sends me a a price list instead of having a conversation with me as a human being. And then let's say that I go to another online trainer. I say, I'm interested. He jumps on a phone call with me. He talks to me for 20, 30 minutes. He like makes me feel really good about my goals. Like I'm going to go with the person that got on the phone with me, even if they're more expensive, because that person showed me that they care about me. Yo, and it's hands down guys, this is relative to a lot of things. Okay. And don't get me wrong. There's going to be a couple of you outliers when I give these examples that are going to be like, no, I would prefer it the other way. Well, I'm not talking to you. Okay. How many of you, if you went into a car dealership 
would go with the dealer who actually sat down and wanted to talk to you about the car that you were looking at and wanted to put the time into making sure that you understood everything versus the guy who just gave you a brochure and fucking walked away and left you standing in the dealership for an hour and a half. Right? How many of you, let's say you were going to buy a house. All right. You go to one of the show homes, you walk inside, you see someone standing there and you have two situations. One person makes you stand there for 25 to 30 minutes without saying a damn word to you. Or you come in and right away they're like, hey, even if they're busy, I'm busy, but I'll be with you in five minutes here. They're interacting with you. They're showing you that you're there. They're giving you some sort of back and forth. You're obviously going to go to the person who gives you a little bit, the person who cares more, the person who wants to talk to you. All right. It's the exact same thing. All right. And a lot of these trainers and it sucks because I've seen a lot of, of amazing coaches get outworked and like out marketed and basically their clients jacked from them from new trainers because the new trainers put more time in the new trainers are getting on the damn phone with people and walking them through even if they're less experienced they're taking the time to talk to people about their problems they're taking the time to get to know them on the fucking phone rather than being like oh you're just a number here's a sheet of paper check out my prices send me the money if you're ready Dude, and dude, this is the funny part too, because the trainers that are the ones that are struggling right now, or the ones that are sending out, I think sending your prices out over email or DMs straight up stupid. Like, let's just put this out there. I I just don't think it's a smart way to do business. And the trainers that are doing that, that are losing clients to trainers that are getting on the phone, even if the trainer has less experience, are pissed at like the newer trainers that are coming on the market. Like some, yep. of our tra- some of our clients are making like 10K in their first 30 days. Like people are mad about that. But instead of being mad about it, why don't you just fix your shit? Like, like you're not an online trainer anymore. Like you're not just like working with clients. Like, okay, cool. That's what you're good at. But you also have to get better at marketing. And you also have to get better at sales. And yes, like you should show up to the call with the intention to serve, but you're still learning sales. Yeah. Like even if you are sending your prices over DMs to your prospects or emails, you're still trying to sell them. Period. This is the pitch. Do you want to pay me? That's a sales process. So if you're going to do the process, I think you should do it right. And the way that you do it right is you actually give a shit about the people that you're talking to. Exactly. All right. Same question to these people who are stuck in their old ways. Um, Are you going to half fast your fitness goals? Probably not. All right. All these old coaches that aren't, I guess, moving into the new ways of bringing in clients and marketing, et cetera, are usually pretty fucking diligent. All right. They look good. They're in shape. They're crushing their goals. Well, you're not going to slack on your fitness goals. It's the same thing with your sales game, right? Like commit to what you're doing. It's 2020. You got to adapt to the ways that are happening right now, or you're going to get left behind. And the old way of just sending a price list over DM is not going to get you anywhere anymore. And it's lazy. It's super fucking lazy. Let's just call it what it is. Like if you're sending your prices over Instagram, Facebook, like it's just straight up lazy. Like you can get on the phone with your, like guys, especially as you're building your business, right? Like if you're building your business and you're not at 15, 20, 30, 40 clients yet, like you've got to be, you've got to be like getting on the phone with your prospects. And for me, like there's like, there comes a certain level where you might want to scale out of that, but like most online trainers are trying to get to two to three to five to seven to 10 K a month. They're trying, they're working at it. Um, and they're unwilling to get on the phone with prospects. But like, dude, like I got on the phone with every single one of my clients that worked with me at aesthetic nation, every single one. Same. Like I worked with when I, my me, like aesthetic nation worked, worked with over a thousand high ticket online fitness clients. And for me, like I worked with hundreds just myself personally. And I got on the phone with every single one of those people because I wanted them to know how much I actually really cared about their business. Yep. You know, like, like you, you got to put the time in. We know coach, uh, coaches right now, they're in the 10K Coaching Academy making over $25,000 a month. And they get on the phone with each of their fucking individual prospects that want to join their program. Not to mention, they've actually got like individual coaching calls with all their clients and more. Find the fucking time put the time in and show people that you actually care and your business will start to thrive hundred percent guys. I get it. Like I get the fear of sales calls. Like I got, I was myself, I was afraid of getting on calls with prospects 
because I'm like, man, I don't want to get rejected. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to appear salesy. And I don't want, you know, to get on a phone call with one of my friends from high school and tell, have him tell me that like, you know, he's not right. Like, I just didn't want that. So if I'm an online trainer right now, and I'm listening to this, and I'm like, hey, like, I really do want to get over this fear of getting on calls. Like, what would your advice be to me if I want, if I wanted to get over the fear of getting on calls? Honestly, there's two things. Okay. And I believe these are probably the only two things in my mind. This is what I did because I went through the same fucking fear. Number one is again, I said this the last podcast, work on your fucking mindset. Okay. Because if your mind is thinking all these negative thoughts before you go and get on the call, you might as well not even get on the fucking call. Okay. Like period. Because if you're thinking the person's broke, they're not going to buy off me. My program sucks. I don't know what I'm doing. They're going to reject me. You're literally just putting all that bad energy out in the universe and they're going to reject you, period. It's like you're going up to a hot girl in the bar or a hot guy, everybody, and like just looking like a mess, like unconfident, like doesn't carry themselves well. You don't want to be there. You're not like carrying yourself at all. You don't look good. They're going to reject you. But if you walk up and you're confident and you have that fucking mindset, you sound good, you sound punctual, you're sounding like, sounding like an authority on the fucking phone, you're more likely to actually get it. Um, and the second thing straight up is to hire somebody who's better than you. All right. I got over my fear because Brian was already where I wanted to be. So when I came into Aesthetic Nation, he mentored me. And then once I got to a certain point where I was getting good on calls, me and him would start to do it to each other. Every fucking day for six months to a year, me and this guy would role play situations that would happen on the phone so we could get more confident because I saw it as a fucking disservice if I was to get on the phone with someone who's 55 pounds overweight, unconfident in their body, relationships are shit, etc. And I didn't get them into my program and they went and lived their life feeling that way. So mm. I refused to let that happen or let that be my fault when I got on the phone. So I hired somebody. I had someone with me to help mentor me. That was already where I wanted to be. Mm. I love that straight up. Yeah, dude. I love it. I love it. I, I, I agree. I think it also, I'm, I'm going to go along the same trains of thought with you. It starts with the mindset. And so I think for me, the mindset is like how you're approaching your calls. Cause like Cole said, like if you're approaching your calls and you're like, this person's broke, they're not going to be able to afford it. I suck at sales. My program sucks. Right? Like that's just not a productive mindset. That's going to lead to a client wanting to say yes to you. So the way that I view it is that like, I have trainer knowledge. This is how I approach my calls. I have knowledge on how to help this person transform their life through fitness. This person has a problem with their fitness goals. I'm going to do an assessment. I'm going to figure out what's going wrong with their fitness goals right now. I'm going to figure out what their goals are. And then I'm going to offer my solution. That's my mindset. And then I never think about like, I also, another thing, guys, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. I treat everyone like they're rich. Yep. Treat everyone like they have the money to afford your program because so many people will write off prospects before they get on the phone with them. But when I was an online fitness coach, like I signed a girl for a thousand dollar program, thousand dollar paid in full for 12 weeks. And she was 19 years old and lived in university. And she was one of my best clients yep. and 19 years old in university. Like that's usually like a, like a, like almost online trainers be like, Oh, she can't afford my program. But like, I just didn't say that. I was like, she's rich. And I told her my price and I was like this or monthly. And she's like, yeah, I'll just do the paid in full. So treat them all like they're rich and then you'll be rewarded like that. But if you show up to every call thinking, oh, they're broke, they're not going to be able to afford it. Like, what do you think the outcome of that call is going to be? They're going to hear in the way that you present that you think they can't afford it. And then they're going to act like that because you're treating them like that. Fuck guys, Brian sold me into his program when we first met, like, I don't even fucking know how long ago now, years ago yes, um, in your fitness coaching. And I was selling my shit to pay for his coaching and just never told him. Literally didn't because I was like, I want to do this. Um, so I made it a fucking priority in my life. And I started selling dumb shit around my house, games, Xbox shit, clothes, et cetera, because I wanted to get it done. Stop writing people off. All right. Your mindset is the thing that's fucking with you, period. All right. You need to stop writing people off before you get on the call because all you're doing is fucking bottlenecking your business, period. Boom, dude. I love this. All right. So what would you say are like the best practices for um, getting over your fear of sales calls? If we could give like one, two, three, like just summarize it just for everybody that's on this call that really wants to get over their fear of calls. What would, what would be the best practices? Um, okay. So one I want to talk about is definitely role plays. 
uh, so people can understand them because it's like the same thing as drilling a sport or a skill or something else, guys. The reason why me and Brian are confident in our sales game and good at our sales game is because we've practiced. We've been on, I fuck, I want to say thousands. I don't know if it is thousands, but it feels like thousands of fucking sales calls. Like it has been <laughs> consistently. You know what I mean? Like I can't even remember the number I've been on so many. Um, and it feels effortless to me now because I've been on so much, but if I've never been on any before, all right, I know that feeling. I've been there in the past. Okay. I still remember my first call in a fucking Starbucks in front of fucking Brian live. It was fucking front. It was scary as shit. Um, but doing it over and over and over is what got me my fucking confidence. Now I understand that you guys might not have a bunch of fucking calls booked right now, but you can role play. And all you got to do with that is you get a friend or you get another trainer. If you're in the 10K Coaching Academy with us, we have 500 coaches you could fucking choose from that'll help you. Um, you can get your family. And what you do is you tell them like, yo, I just want you to be a person who wants to lose 20 pounds. Um, and I just want you to fucking talk to me on the phone. Pretend like I'm fucking walking you through a consultation or a sales call and run it through, through with them and make them be hard on you. All right. Make them give you objections, make them not want to work with you, make them, I guess, go through the process with you a little bit more in depth. So you get that fucking practice because you're never going to get good unless you fucking practice and you're never going to get over your fear unless you just dive into it. Mm. That's good. So I like that. And then so role play and practice, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to put so role play be number two. I'm going to put this as number one, because I want you to frame your calls differently. Yeah. So this is immediately after this podcast, I want you to, if you have a fear of sales calls, I want you to sit down and I want you to write down the word sales call, right? Yeah. And then I want you to scratch it out. And then I want you to put, they have a problem. I have a solution. I'm here to see if I can help. That's the point of the call. They have a problem. I have a solution. I'm here to see if I can help. Like that's the mindset because if you have that like set mind on like, that's the purpose of this call, then the way that you approach getting calls is going to change because you're not approaching calls for sales. So it'll make it easier to approach people that you might not have approached before because you were afraid of selling them. They have a problem. I have a solution. The call is to see if I can help. That's it, right? So now you're approaching lead gen differently. You're approaching booking that call differently. And before you get on that actual call with that prospect, like five minutes before, I want you to sit down and I want you to read that. They have a problem. I have a solution. I'm here to see if I can help. If you change the way that you view your calls, it will diminish a lot of the fear that comes with feeling salesy. And like Cole said, you have to practice. Practice makes permanent. I wrote a post about this the other day. And I said, when something is right, I study it 100 times. And that applies to sales, that applies to marketing, that applies to podcasting, that applies to writing content, all of it. Like I have this, I've had the same mentor now for the last like two years. I took like a three month long break, but then I went back to him because he's so smart. Because like when something is right, I study it over and over and over again. And so when I wanted to get like really, really good at sales and I wanted to master my sales game, me and Cole got on the phone every single day for six months. Every time I had a call booked, I'd be like, yo, Cole, can I call you for 15 minutes and just do the pitch? Um, hey, cool. Like I've, you know, I'm trying I'm changing up my agenda a little bit. Would you mind if I called and practice the agenda? Then when I get on the call with the prospect, I'm already like rehearsed, right? It just comes out, boom, effortlessly. Instead of me trying to figure out my pitch on the phone with the prospect, somebody that's like, might pay me money or not. Mm -hmm. Yo, and I got to say something right here too, because I feel like a lot of people, if you're a coach listening to this right now, and you're still stuck in those PDF ways, because again, you see calls as sleazy because a lot of people do. Okay. I've heard so many coaches say, say the words, I think calls are sleazy, or um, I don't think coaches should get on calls because their coach is not salesman. I honestly feel that the PDF is a more sleazy fucking way. A hundred percent. Because again, the call guys, what Brian is trying to drill into your head right now is that the call is supposed to be like an, an emotional fucking connection. All right. You're getting to know someone on a deeper fucking level. The first thing I say when I get on the call is, yo, I just want to get to know you better to see if we're going to be a good fit to work together, period. Mm. All right. I want to know you. I want to know your problems. I want to know everything about you um, before I decide if you're actually a good fit for my program, because I don't, number one, I don't like to help everybody. That's not what I'm about. And I want to make sure that you actually fuck with what I do rather than just sending you a payment list and looking at you like a number, not a fucking person. Mm. Um, I love that. 
You got to fucking do this. Okay. So I'm going to keep, continue to repeat it as we're going through this. You got to start doing fucking calls. All right. You have to. Boom. Guys, I think that's it. Um, that brings us to the end of this podcast episode. We're talking about getting over your fear of sales calls. So number one is like, you've got to change the way you view the call. Changing the lens that what you, you, what you view the call from will allow you to remove the anxiety that comes from feeling sleazy because sleazy, your job isn't to sell them on the call. They have a problem. You have a solution. The call is to figure out if you can help or not. All right. If you can't help, you can offer your solution. But like, I honestly, in full transparency, there were some calls that I got on where I just don't offer the help. Like there yep. are some people that I don't ask to work with me because I'm like, I don't think you're a good fit. Like, you know, like you've never, ever, ever touched a dumbbell before. And you like, and I honestly think you need in-person training. So, or you, uh, you have like a serious like eating disorder and I'm not qualified for that. Like there are times where it's like not a good fit, but if, if I feel like I can help you, which is 90% of the time, then I will offer you my services. So change the lens, which you view the calls from. They have a problem. You have a solution and you're here to see if you can help. And like Cole said, you got to practice. Got it. You, you have, have to. to fucking role play. You can't expect Kobe to be as good as he was if you never practiced. You can't expect fucking Tom Brady to be as, as good as he was if you never practiced. It's the same with every single fucking thing you do in life, period. All right? People are good at what they do because they've done it before. All right? If you're scared of sales calls, it's probably because you've never tried to do one before. So you got to practice. You got to get in there. You got to get over that, fe that fear. Take that leap and move forward.